Alhamdulillah Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil mursalin Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ajma'in Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana Innaka anta al-alimul hakim Dear colleagues We will continue inshallah The second part of the, this lecture about the spinal neoplasms And you remember we have finished two items of this category the first one was the bone tumors involving the vertebrae and the, the neural elements then we discussed the, the differential diagnosis of epidural pathology and now we will continue with diagnosis of subdural lesions as well as the intramedullary lesions you remember from the previous lecture that for the diagnosis of epidural or extradural lesion you need to follow the CSF space on the side of the lesion then you will see that the CSF space as well as the spinal cord are compressed by the lesion then you know that this is an epidural pathology then in order to diagnose the subdural lesions you also follow the CSF space then you will notice that the CSF space as you approach the site of the lesion is getting wide either you are coming from above or you are coming from below then the CSF space on the side of the lesion as you approach the lesion it will be widened and the spinal cord is compressed so you know that this is a subdural pathology or an intradural extramedullary lesion then what is the differential diagnosis there are two main pathologies here the neurofibroma and the meningioma of course other lesions can be seen in this place but they are relatively uncommon including hemorrhage in the subdural space dermoid epidermoid arachnoid as you remember then metastasis and metastasis can be seen here especially the type known as uh, 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 metastatic csf seed then uh, starting by the neurofibroma which is one of the common lesions seen in the subdural space neurofibroma has no sex predilection compared to the uh, next common lesion which is the meningioma which is commonly seen in females also neurofibroma do not usually show calcification while meningioma may show calcium number three a neurofibroma usually shows heterogeneous contrast enhancement while meningiomas usually shows homogeneous meningiomas show homogeneous contrast enhancement some of the neurofibromas can extend through the neural foramina into the extraspinal space forming what is known as the dumbbell shaped configuration and this is one of the character of neurofibromas and this is not usually seen in cases of meningiomas also remember that neurofibromas are frequently be multiple while meningiomas are uncommon to be multiple and you see here an, an, a good example for a neurofibroma and the subdural space on the right side the neurofibroma shows here homogeneous contrast enhancement it is seen classically extending through the neural foramen into the paravertebral uh, area and the, the off sagittal images can also uh, the off midline sagittal images can also show the neurofibroma uh, extending through the neural foramen this is typical appearance of uh, neurofibroma in the spine and you see part of the lesion is inside of the spinal canal part is extending through the neural foramen to form a paravertebral soft tissue mass what's known as the dumbbell configuration then in my opinion this is the most typical appearance of a neurofibroma in the inside of the spinal canal it uh, looks like an oval shaped structure and this structure is not homogeneously enhanced it will show 
a small area or areas of uh, non-enhancing uh, parts of the lesion which is considered typical for this particular lesion inside of the spinal canal then if you look to the CSF space and you can see that the CSF space is getting wide while you are approaching the lesion indicating that this lesion is in the subdural space the diagnosis of this case is extremely easy because this the lesion is totally confined within the dural sac and uh, there is no cord here then you can see that there is a small lesion of uh, low signal intensity in the T1 and T2 weighted images and it shows homogeneous contrast enhancement this lesion is intimately related to the coda equina nerve roots and uh, the diagnosis here is, uh, uh, is easy as I have said then this is the neurofibroma uh, which is related to one of the uh, lumbar nerve roots neurofibroma can be multiple can be extensive in cases of neurofibromatosis whether the type 1 or the type 2 and uh, uh, many times we can see this this example where you are confronted by too many neurofibromas all over the whole spine and the part of the neurofibromas are included within the spinal canal others can extend outside the canal through the nerve roots while uh, some of the neurofibromas can be totally outside the spinal canal along the uh, nerve roots then you can see in the axial image widening of the neural foramina being occupied by heterogeneously enhanced soft tissue masses and this is a very informative sagittal t2 weighted image of a case of neurofibromatosis in the lumbosacral area and here if you look to this uh, case which is uh, a particular example or a peculiar example for neurofibromatosis involving every single ne neural exit frame uh, starting from the cervical spine ending into the sacred region passing by the dorsal region all these enhancing lesions inside the neural glands represent neurofibromas and they, they are variable in size being relatively bulky in the cervical spine as well as in the sacral area they are relatively smaller in the dorsal region as you can see in the axial images you can see the tumor with classic configuration an intraspinal component and an extraspinal component extending through the neural framing and this can be unilateral or bilateral as you can see in this very uh, impressive example then uh, we came to the uh, meningioma and meningioma is frequently seen in females it usually contains calcium calcium is usually detected by CT you know that MRI is less sensitive for calcium detection also meningioma shows homogeneous enhancement it can show the dural tail which is not seen in cases of uh, neurofibromas it do not extend through the neural foramen and it is less frequently to be multiple compared to the neurofibromas in the t2 weighted image the lesion shows intermediate signal you are sure that this lesion is in the subdural space because if you follow the csf it will be get widened while you are approaching the lesion either from above or from below and you you can see easily that the cord is compressed and this is MR myelography showing the, the lesion compressing the CSF as well as the spinal cord. Then uh, a neurofibro uh, meningioma, as I have said, will show homogeneous post contrast enhancement. Y you can see the CSF space, as I have mentioned, and you can appreciate also the dural tail. And this is a meningioma inside the spinal canal showing intermediate signal in the 
Tito weighted images, homogeneous post contrast enhancement, and this is the tumor by MR myelography. This is also another case of a spinal meningioma, which is seen in the cervical dorsal region. In the T1 weighted image, the lesion showed intermediate signal. Also in the T2 weighted image, it shows intermediate signal, but after contrast injection, the lesion shows homogeneous post-contrast enhancement. And uh, in the axial images, of course, you can appreciate also the interdural location of the lesion, but this can be uh, more appreciated in the uh, sagittal images. Meningiomas uh, represent intradural meningiomas, represent about 25% of the meningiomas in, in all over the body. 80% of these meningiomas can be seen in the dorsal region, 17% can be seen in the cervical region, and 7% uh, uh, in the lumbar region. This is a, a frequent location for meningioma near the foramen magnum or in the upper part of the cervical spinal canal. The lesion is of intermediate signal in the T1, relatively dark signal in the T2, and homogeneous post-contrast enhancement. And if you follow the CSF, you can see the, uh, the sign I, I have mentioned. This is also a case of a subdural lesion, and this subdural lesion is diagnosed by widening of the CSF space on the side of the lesion while you are approaching the lesion either from above or from below then this lesion has no definitive criteria to support either the meningioma or the neurofibroma it can be one of them then it's enough to say that this is a subdural lesion and the differential diagnosis may include meningioma and the neurofibroma being a homogeneously enhanced you can suspect the meningioma but you should remember that neurofibroma whenever it is a small it will show homogeneous enhancement in most of the cases then in the subdural space you can see lipoma, you can see epidermoid cyst, and you can see dermoid cyst as well as arachnoid cyst. Then uh, this is lipoma because it shows high signal intensity in the T1 weighted image, and in the T2 weighted images it shows decreased signal, and in the fat suppressed image you can see suppression of the uh, fat signal. Uh, this leptomeningeal uh, uh, metastasis or carcinomatosis is a lesion that is frequently seen in the clinical practice, especially in patients who have pathology in uh, tumors in the CNS, and also this can occur from other lesions uh, outside the CNS. Uh, the main uh, uh, diagnostic uh, factor uh, relies upon a contrast injection in these particular cases. You cannot diagnose leptomeningeal metastasis without injecting contrast media, uh, uh, whether by CT or by MRI, more better, of course, by MRI. And MRI is considered the most sensitive technique for detection of leptomeningeal metastasis, and the contrast injection is mandatory in order to diagnose these lesions. Uh, uh, what's seen in the, in the images after injection of contrast is the delineation of the borders or the margins of the spinal cord by continuous or interrupted uh, very fine nodules that are enhancing in the post-contrast series. And this is almost uh, similar to the sugar coating of this, uh, as you can see in this figure, which is uh, well appreciated after contrast injection. Before contrast injection, you may predict that there is some uh, leptomeningeal lesions, but after contrast injection, you are sure that there, there are leptomeningeal nodules, and also you can see enhancement of the leptomeninges covering the distal part of the spinal cord. These lesions can be asymptomatic, they can be either focal or diffuse, as you can see here, and may be attached to the dura or the cranial nerves, and sometimes there is hydrocephalus associated in, uh, in these conditions. Then if you look here and you see, 
there is uh, leptomeningeal metastatic lesions uh, delineating the distal part of the uh, spinal cord in this patient with uh, breast cancer. You know that uh, these lesions are frequently uh, give uh, metastasis via the CSF, uh, including the medulloblastoma, ebendymoma, and uh, the bionial body germinoma. Other lesions can produce uh, metastatic CSF seeds and uh, uh, some of the lesions can occur outside the central nervous system like the cases with breast cancer. And this is the female child with uh, medulloblastoma. The cranial scans showed extensive leptomeningeal enhancement in the basal cisterns, in the sylvian fissures, in the interhemispheric fissure, in the choroidal fissures, as well as in the cerebellar folia. This is diagnostic of leptomeningeal uh, CSF seed. The spinal images of the same case showed extensive leptomeningeal uh, thickening with enhancing nodules uh, starting from the uh, craniocervical junction or the medullocervical junction extending down to the terminal part of the conus medullaris. And you see thickened leptomeninges with nodular enhancement all through along the spinal cord diagnostic of a leptomeningeal enhancement and then you have to differentiate between multiple neurofibromas which are located in the subdural space and the dural or leptomeningeal deposits which are also located in the subdural space but the difference is the neurofibromas are masses within the subdural space. They do not affect the surface of the cord. But these lesions are nodules, and you can appreciate easily that they are intruding inside the substance of the spinal cord. They are not located actually within the subdural space. But you see this uh, thickened enhanced leptomeninges and you see the nodules that are impinging or insinuating themselves inside the substance of the spinal cord. This is the difference between both. And uh, this finally we came to the intramedullary lesions and intramedullary lesions will expand the cord. Then this is the situation where the cord is enlarged and the CSF space is attenuated. And you remember <coughs> extra dural lesions will compress the CSF and the cord. Subdural lesions will widen the CSF and compress the cord. Intramedullary lesions will enlarge the cord and attenuate uh, the CSF space around the cord. There are two main lesions inside the, uh, the substance of the cord. These are the ebendymoma and the, the astrocytoma, which represent about 90% of the lesions occurring inside the substance of the cord. There are 10% of other lesions that are considered relatively uncommon compared to, those, to these two main uh, entities. Then you, you can, uh, if you see it, this is the myelographic image, which was commonly used before the era of MRI. And here you can see that the contrast column is markedly attenuated all around the, the cord, which is grossly expanded all over the cervical region, indicating the presence of an intramedullary pathology. But we are not sure about this uh, pathology. Then we have the astrocytoma, which is considered the most common intramedullary tumor in the pediatric age group. And this lesion uh, is commonly affecting the dorsal spinal cord, but frequently it can also be seen in the cervical region. This lesion is similar to the bilocytic uh, astrocytoma, which is uh, seen in the brain, this bilocytic astrocytoma if you remember, is just a cystic lesion with an enhancing mural nodule. Then uh, you see here a lesion which is grossly expanding the cervical spinal cord. The lesion appears cystic. It is of low signal in the T1 and high signal in the T2. After contrast enhancement, and you got enhancing nodule within the cystic component of the lesion. 
then uh, this is an astrocytoma uh, of the spinal of the cervical spinal cord uh, this is the enhancing part of the lesion and you see a cystic component above and the below the lesion then you remember that uh, less than 2% of spinal astrocytomas are on the aggressive type or the glioblastoma multiform. It is said that one of the characters of astrocytoma is to involve a long segment of the spinal cord which may reach about seven vertebral segments. And uh, it is also well known that the cystic component uh, surrounding the enhancing part of the lesion is part of the tumor. It is not a, cis, a, a syrinx, for example. Then, hemorrhage is uncommon and syrinx, for, syrinx formation is common in all types of intramedullary lesions. Then, this is also an example of bilocytic astrocytoma. Uh, the cord, cervical cord is expanded. It is occupied by a relatively low signal lesion in the T1, high signal in the T2. After contrast enhancement, the knee got enhancing solid part of the lesion with the cystic component above and the below. And this cystic component, as I have said, belongs to the tumor itself. It is not a syringomyelia. Then a uh, bendymoma is, uh, as the literature says, is a focal lesion, and it is usually limited to a lesser number of vertebral segments compared to the extensive uh, appearance of the uh, bilocytic astrocytoma. It arises from the ebendymal cells inside the spinal canal and is considered one of the most common intramedullary tumors. And you see the, the, the percentage of incidence. It is known, it is well known from the literature that it is virtually impossible to separate astrocytoma from ebendymoma based on imaging. And uh, this is a, a, a rule that you can also use in the differential diagnosis. You may say that I am looking at an intramedullary tumor, which may be an astrocytoma or may be an ebendymoma. And uh, uh, factors favoring astrocytoma may be the younger age of the patient, may be the cystic component and the solid component of the lesion, may be the long segment of the uh, spinal cord involvement by the tumor compared to the ebendymoma. But uh, you should remember that it may be impossible to separate the two lesions based on imaging. At uh, some time, I thought that uh, the diffusion tensor imaging can help to differentiate between astrocytoma and ebendymoma based on the fact that astrocytoma is a tumor of the substance of the spinal cord which will infiltrate the cord tracts while the ebendymoma is arising from the central spinal canal which will displace the tracts without invasion but this thinking was not right and according to the literature, we, we can uh, uh, divide the lesions inside the substance of the spinal cord into three types according to cord fiber involvement. The type 1 indicates that fibers of the spinal cord did not pass through the lesion. In type 2, some fibers are, are seen crossing the, the lesion, but most of the lesion do not contain fibers of the tracts. Type 3 fibers are completely encased by the tumor. And this is just an example of type 1. And this uh, lesion uh, is a, an intradural lesion based on the data I have mentioned before. And this meningioma, of course, will not involve these, the fibers of the spinal cord. It will just compress the fibers, as you can see here, and this is considered as uh, type 1. Then I will give you some of the examples, but you should remember that uh, tractography is not a way to separate, to separate between astrocytoma and ebendymoma, and uh, still the fact is there, you cannot discriminate between both lesions based on imaging. 
then if you look here and this is a lesion inside the substance of the spinal cord in the t2 weighted image and it is cystic and it is bilocytic astrocytoma based on the tractography images this lesion is seen displaying apart the fibers of the spinal cord denoting a low grade neoplasm or bilocytic astrocytoma with no evidence of infiltration of the fibers or destruction then this is an intermediate grade astrocytoma also in the upper part of the spinal cord cystic lesion with a solid nodule and the nodule has enhanced after contrast injection and you can appreciate that there is some fiber implication within the uh, tumor itself denoting that this lesion is not a low grade tumor but it is relatively of a, an intermediate grade astrocytoma this is an ebendymoma and in the ebendymoma uh, they chose uh, heterogeneous increased signal in the T2-weighted image with heterogeneous post-contrast enhancement. And he can appreciate that there is focal partial infiltration of the substance of the cord uh, to the site of the lesion. And this indicates that this lesion is malignant and is infiltrating. Then the, it, the, the value of tractography is to uh, predict the, uh, the intramedullary lesion with it it is a low-grade lesion without tract infiltration or a high-grade lesion with tract infiltration, but it cannot uh, separate between ebendymoma and astrocytoma. Uh, the ebendymoma affecting the conus is a lesion that can be easily predicted based on imaging and th then if you see a lesion like this one which is of heterogeneous increased signal in the t2 weighted image and the heterogeneous post contrast enhancement you may you may say that this is a conus ebendymoma also ebendymoma of the phylum terminal can be predicted from imaging and uh, this is I, I think an easy diagnosis if you see a mass uh, in the uh, lumbar region expanding the spinal canal and uh, scalloping the vertebral bodies and this mass is of low signal in the T1 and a relative increased signal in the T2 and the strong uh, heterogeneous post contrast enhancement and you may predict that this is a, a phylum terminal ebendymum and this is also a pediatric example uh, for a te phylum terminal ebendymoma where the lesion shows uh, some uh, areas of hemorrhage being of high signal in this t2 in this t1 and the heterogeneous increased signal in the t2 with the image and you see this non-uniform pattern of contrast enhancement the lesion is expanding the spinal canal and uh, it may indent the posterior aspect of the vertebral bodies then if you see a lesion intramedullary and this lesion has a cystic component and a solid component then the differential diagnosis will include the ebendymoma the bilocytic astrocytoma and the hemangioblastoma in, in cases of ebendymoma the cystic component do not belong to the tumor it is just the syrinx inside the spinal canal and the tumor is this one but in cases of bilocytic astrocytoma, the whole lesion is the tumor and this cystic component is part of the neoblast. And this is the same case in cases of hemangioblastoma. This is a case of ebendymoma, which affects the spinal cord in about 45% of cases. And the, the lesion may extend to involve the upper part of the dorsal spinal cord. And this lesion... Uh, shows a, a cystic component with a solid heterogeneously enhancing component after contrast injection it shows high signal in the t2-weighted images and it causes focal expansion of the uh, spinal cord and these tumors may have the tendency to bleed leading to uh, deformation of subarachnoid hemorrhage and you remember that the cystic part of the tumor is not belonging to the tumor itself and this is an ebendymoma in the lower part of the cervical region and it is not well appreciated in the t1 with the damage and it is appreciated after contrast injection the high signal above and the below the tumor is the cystic syrinx formation inside the spinal canal which do not belong to the tumor itself 
then uh, uh, we have the uh, remaining 10% of intramedullary lesions which include the hemangioblastoma, the metastatic deposits, lymphoma, dermoid, epidermoid, and uh, some of the inflammatory lesions like hydatid cysts, sarcoidosis, you remember this sarcoid, TB and Bilhar diseases. I have uh, explained these lesions uh, in the sector of uh, spinal infection. And also you can uh, remember the presence of MS plaques inside the substance of the spinal cord. Then uh, hemangioblastoma as a tumor may represent about 1 to 2 percent of the primary uh, uh, intracranial neoplasms. It can uh, represent 10 to 20 percent uh, of neoplasms in patients with von hebel uh, syndrome. This lesion is usually seen in adults and its main location is in the cerebellar hemisphere and some of the lesions can be seen in the spinal cord. The lesion can be solitary, can be multiple. It is uh, almost similar to bilocytic astrocytoma. There is a cyst with an enhancing mural nodule and the nodule is a, a vascular lesion that uh, will show a tumor blush on and geography and this is a case of multiple uh, uh, hemangioblastomas in a patient with von hebel lindau syndrome and you see about three lesions and this angiogram shows that there is a tumor blush of this big lesion uh, on angiography diagnostic of hemangioblastoma and uh, uh, I hope you remember that for the diagnosis of von hebel lindau syndrome, you may have one of three possibilities. A patient having multiple hemangioblastomas, either in the brain or in the spinal cord or both, or the patient have a single hemangioblastoma with positive family history of uh, hemangioblastomas or von, von hebel lindau syndrome, or there is a single hemangioblastoma with visceral uh, tumors. Then you see in this particular example, and I have shown it before, uh, you can see uh, three hemangioblastomas in the cerebellum. This, there is a cystic with two enhancing mural nodules, cystic lesion with two enhancing mural nodules, another one and the third one. And you remember that the nodule may be large enough to occupy the whole uh, cavity of the cystic component. Then we came to intramedullary metastasis. They are diagnosed by the presence of a known primary malignancy. This patient had melanoma, and uh, you can see a lesion inside the vertebral body number two, and a lesion inside the conus. This lesion in, in the conus is of intermediate signal in the T1, high signal in the T2, heterogeneous post-contrast enhancement. And you see that this is not a hemangioma because the appearance of the lesion in the T2 weighted image is not bright. You remember that hemangioma will be so bright in the T2 weighted image to approach the signal of the CSF. Then this patient had the ovarian cancer with an intramedullary lesion and this lesion expands the substance of the spinal cord and it it shows heterogeneous increased signal in the T2 weighted image with diffuse uh, cord edema above and below the site of the lesion after contrast enhancement in C, almost homogeneous post contrast enhancement. The presence of a known primary with an intramedullary lesion is suggestive of metastatic disease. And this is also a spinal cord metastasis and you can reach the diagnosis by the presence of other metastatic deposits in the rest of the vertebral bodies and th there is a lesion here which is better seen after contrast injection with fat suppression inside the, the substance of the cord on the contrary to the metastatic deposits uh, in the spinal uh, in the vertebral column i said that these lesions are well appreciated in the t1 weighted images uh, uh, without contrast injection. But in this case, if you have fat suppression, you, you may be able to uh, de detect the lesions, but they are already uh, seen in the uh, pre-contrast uh, scans. 
then the, this is a patient with breast cancer and uh, you can see a lesion inside the substance of the oak of the cord with diffuse cord edema above and below the site of the lesion this patient had breast cancer as i have said with liver metastasis and she developed an intramedullary metastatic deposit then for the diagnosis of intramedullary lymphoma you should know that the patient had lymphoma and uh, this is an example the lesion is not well appreciated in the t1 and also after contrast enhancement but you can appreciate the lesion inside the substance of the uh, upper part of the cervical spinal cord and the t2 weighted images you know that uh, MS plaques can occur intracranially as well as in the substance of the spinal cord and these MS plaques uh, will show uh, intermediate signal in the T1 they, they are not well appreciated in the T1 they are appreciated in the T2 weighted image and if they show contrast enhancement and this indicates active disease then finally intramedullary sinex which means that there is a cavity inside the substance of the uh, spinal cord as you can see here there is a diffuse low signal uh, cavity involving most of the uh, cervical and upper dorsal spinal cord and uh, the uh, pathology of the development of uh, this syrinx inside the, the spinal cord is not well uh, known there is alteration of the csf flow at the base of the skull or abnormal csf pressure and this pressure will be transmitted to the central spinal canal we do not know how this can occur it will result in dilatation of the central spinal canal and we have uh, three types of uh, syringomyelia the type number one is the syrinx communicating with the, the force ventricle with hydrocephalus caused by obstruction distal to the outlet foramina of the force ventricle and uh, the the second type is dilated central spinal canal not communicating with the force ventricle as in cases of chiari intradural tumors arachnoiditis and the uh, canal stenosis the third type is just a damage to the substance of the spinal cord secondary to trauma infection or ischemia leading to the development of an area of myelomalacia inside the substance of the cord which will form a localized ceilings. Thank you very much. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.